Good morning, viewers, and yes, welcome back. It's 7, 11 a.m. Welcome back to the Tobago Updates Morning Show, coming to you here live from the Port Mall in Scarborough, Tobago. Yes, viewers, and we're heading straight on into our first uh, interview this morning. We are chatting with Elvis Rajman, and this morning we are clearing the air regarding the Tobago Jazz Experience, the procurement process, and it's no secret. Uh, quite recently, we saw a release coming out from the Office of the Chief Secretary within the Tobago House of Assembly. Good morning, and welcome to you, Elvis. Good morning, Julian, and thank you for having me, um, and thank you for Tobago Updates for reaching out to clear the air on, the, on this matter. So just for clarity, um, I listened to the news when um, she was doing the news earlier, and it was a nice twist of the story, but I'm here to clear some air where that is concerned. I'm not here in the capacity as Eldest Rajman, CEO of TPAC. I'm here in the capacity of Eldest Rajman, protecting his integrity and the integrity of his interests. And, and just giving general information as to what would have taken place as to where we are now. All right. So, Elvis, we're seeing a situation where mm -hmm. the release that came out uh, March 16th from the Office of the Chief Secretary mm -hmm. started off by indicating, or rather it includes reference to the fact of your current position as CEO yeah. of uh, yeah. TPAC, yeah. and quite notably as well, uh, where they indicated until days ago, a member of the Tobago Experience, um, Jazz Experience Implementation Committee. Yes. So we want to get started uh, from the perspective in the first instance, the responsibilities that you would have held at that time right. and what you hold currently. Right. So as the CEO of the Tobago Performing Arts Company, um, my, my, my mandate, my area of, of focus is really strategic, creative, aesthetics, the performing arts. How do we integrate these things to make what we do in the island on the island better? So the Honorable Secretary, in, in her wisdom, Tashia Boris, she would have brought together all our key players, um, the, the CEO of TPAC, the CEO of Festival Commission, the CEO of the Tobago Tourism Agency, as well as her advisors and Mr. Kun Kawan, as part of this committee, a steering committee, to really treat with more or less strategic sort of direction for jazz. And, and, in, and, and in our wisdom, there were clear and separate roles and function. So my role and function on the, on the committee was really strategic, creative, and aesthetics. Let's see what the festival could look like. Let's see where the festival could be. Creating and adding value to those areas that will really speak to you know, doing something bigger and better, drawing also from the experience and the skill sets from the company. And I would have shared those things, and those things were very clear. Um, so everything in regards to budgeting, financing, all of those role and functions, were, there, was another, there was another individuals who were responsible for those things. And those are the under festival commission and the division. Because if you understand, we all understand how money flows with the division. The, 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 the festival commission will request funding from the division, and they will get approval and, and you know, do this different things. So at no point in time was I involved in any of those things. But what is interesting in this is that the first day that the secretary called a meeting for the committee, very, very early in the conversation, I said, secretary, I wish to disclose. I said, I don't wish to have, I don't wish to function if my role and function here would create a conflict of interest because I'm a part of a company who provides services for many things on the island, not just the THA. The company is very big in destination weddings and corporate events and and, 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 and party scenes. So we, we, we are on the island. The THA is just one of the other customers that we provide service to when, when, need, when need to. But because I am very sensitive to the fact, I declared it very early. A couple of weeks after that, that happened on the 6th of February. A couple of weeks after that, I then sent a formal correspondence because I'm surprised to see this correspondence on Facebook. So I'm wondering who would have shared this correspondence on Facebook because I sent it to only four persons. This only four person received this correspondence, where I formally indicated to both the secretary and the CEO of Festival Commission, alongside all the other committee members, of me asking to recuse myself from any areas of the operation that would compromise the integrity of myself, my business interests, and also the THA. Because at the end of the day, I want this thing to work for all of us. So the letter was acknowledged receiving, and we are fine. And that letter was directed to the secretary that would have put it together was, the it, committee. Yes, and also all the other, I, I copied all the, members other, of all the other members. So everybody's fully aware. On the 7th of, of March, John Arnold called a meeting to discuss some new plans they wanted to consider for the Jazz Festival. 
And before the meeting even started, I said, Chairman, I said, John, let me take this moment. I said, I want to declare my interest. I did it a second time, even though I did it once before and sent a document because I didn't want them to just accidentally start talking about anything that I should be hearing about. So I actually declared, John said, it's not that kind of meeting. We're talking about you know, different locations, whatever the case may be. The meeting went on, and that was fine. Subsequent to that, the very same festival commission called an entire stakeholder, service supplier stakeholder meeting where all the song providers, all the state providers, screen providers, different people who do with our services. They invited all of us to a meeting at Festival Commission to discuss how they want to deal with the activation of jazz. And once they receive the information, they will share the information to all service providers. State Solution was included in that. Oh, so you, State Solution was included in that, that meeting in, in with that suppliers? Meeting, yes, was included. But I am still very sensitive to ensure that I don't get close to or have access to, because it's managed by the division, or the Northern Division, the Festival Commission. Last Friday, the CEO of Festival Commission, John Arno, copied me late in the evening, sent an email out to several other members of staff. And mind you, when I declared my interest at the meeting that John had on the 7th of March, that meeting was present in the meeting was procurement, finance, logistics, all the major heads of the division. So another division, the, part, the Festival Commission. So everybody's fully aware I'm declaring my interest, so I don't want to be close. Late Friday afternoon, John Arnold sent an email with information in regards to jazz and copied me in the email. Once I recognized that I was copied in the email, I immediately reached out to John. I said, John, this is a problem. You cannot copy me in, 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 in the informa copy me information of what I've asked to be recused of because it will compromise my integrity and also the integrity of the, of the Festival Commission. John indicated that he will treat with the matter. Because I said, I hope that this does not compromise what I have been trying to safeguard in the first place, because I took the necessary steps. So at no point in time, I have asked this on three or four different occasions, but I have recused myself. Any of my, any of my colleagues said to me, no, Rajman, this was all. Because at the time, of course, I believe they felt that my role and function was strategic, and I am not dealing with anything that speaks to budget or procurement or tendering. John sent that email to me. And as a result of that, it is my, is my belief that the procurement unit, who was also copied in the same email, saw that I am tagged into the email. And as a result of that, when they sent out tender requests for the Jazz Festival, they sent to all service, other service providers on the island and sent them to state solutions. So I, I asked the question, why? And John indicated there was a, they may have a conflict of interest issue and they're seeking legal counsel on it. So I said, OK. All of Friday on Monday evening went, and there was no response. And that's this Monday? Yes, this is Monday. And so I had my attorney write to Festival Commission asking, so, quite subtly, was this an oversight as to why State Solution was not sent a, a request, or there may be another deeper, deeper, deeper issue at hand? But we like a response at least by 6 p.m. that evening, because mind you, the closing date for the tender was Thursday 16th, so that's an entire day gone. With Festival Commission did not respond. There was no response from them. So we went to the court, and people think that there's a fight between Elvis and the THA. There's no fight between Elvis and the THA. Elvis is simply trying to bring closure to procedure and system. Because if it's that I am following the procedure and system as set up by the law, if it's that there's a conflict, you need to disclose the conflict and the interest. And I've done so on several occasions. And I think everybody on the table, from chief to bottle washer knew that I did that. And I did it consistently. The issue for me lies with the person who made the mistake. Because where is accountability of John Arnold sharing sensitive information of Festival Commission? I didn't solicit the information. He sent it. And I recognized the implication. And what I did, I reached out to him. I asked him, I said, this could be an issue. And he spoke to his corp secretary. And his corp secretary gave a determination and a ruling, and an ad or advice more so, as to what could happen. And I agreed. I said, I will, re I will just in the event that I am not copied on any of these things going forward, I will remove myself from all committees. And I removed myself from all committees forthwith. And when did that take place, the, the removal from all I, I from was all removed committees. from 
uh, I, I sent them a letter this Sunday morning. This Sunday morning. So all of these things happened between Saturday and Sunday. That is it, Saturday right. and Sunday. So I removed myself for it. And then on Monday, they are sending out the request. But the thing is, what is interesting, Julian, is that procurement, budgeting, tendering, all of these things lie within the responsibility of the Festival Commission. Do okay how much power people think I may have? I still can't control what happens inside there. That's an independent unit. They still have to determine based on one's capacity, based on one's experience, based on the cost. And the interesting thing about jazz is that the amount of work that the jazz, the jazz festival requires, it allows for all service providers on the island to ply their trade. So when is it that you go and you take a major service provider for no reason, because mind you, one week before the tenders went out, the very set state solution was asked to submit a tender for the launch of jazz. And we didn't submit anything because I was working close to the project. So therefore, for the same company, I, we did, the, the company's management did not submit anything because it's an integrity issue. And my integrity is intact. And I wish to put it on record that my integrity is intact. I did all I needed to do to safeguard my integrity, the integrity of my business that I'm a part of, but also the integrity of the THA of which I'm also a part of. And I felt that this situation was allowed to mushroom into what it mushroomed into, and there must be accountability. And I place on record all of the things I'm saying here at this point in time, every single thing. So one of the things I want to uh, clarify, because um, one of the viewers is asking, so we want to make that connection. Is this the first time, mm -hmm. um, because I know you have been in the field yes, yes, yes. for a number of years um, within the realm of culture, yes. you know what I mean, the performing arts and so on. Mm -hmm. Is this the first time you're sitting on the jazz committee? No, this is, this is, this is, I've been on jazz committees for years, but in, in terms of really creating a separation of power or a separation of responsibility, there are clear areas. So if is it that I am dealing with, with um, strategic management, strategic management doesn't have to deal with, with financing. I'm giving big picture ideas. I'm giving what a location could look like. But the different arms of the division or the, or the or festival commission will be able to determine what those things would be and assess a cost those things are independently managed without my um, involvement. And at no point in time, the CEO can attest, at no point in time or any other member of the committee can attest, I was involved in any budgetary discussion at any point in time. I was totally away from it. So the follow-up to that would be, I want you to define again for the benefit of others, um, the scope of work usually put forward or presented by state solutions. Yeah. Uh, because you're, you're making reference to what the responsibility yes. might have included in terms of strategic management. Yeah. So I want to treat within your private capacity mm. now in relation to state solutions. What kind of services are provided as it relates to the event in question um, okay. where you would have wanted the opportunity to be able to put forward? Um, your services as well okay. to offer for the festival. So, and that's a very, that's a very interesting question. Um, and that was primarily the reason why the Festival Commission saw it necessary to call in all service providers because they wanted all service providers to know what is possibly going to come. So there are two major service providers for stage and lighting on the island, two major. But when it comes to international artists or international clients, they, what, whatever we do here is dictated by their rider. So their rider will say, I need this size stage, I need this amount of lighting, I need this, this, that, and the other. What would, happen, what would have happened in the past, all of these things would have farmed over to Trinidad, period. And we know this. You would see all the companies coming in and farmed over to Trinidad. We made the argument, let us build capacity for Tobago, Union, for Tobago businesses right here. Let us now give us the opportunity so we can build capacity, reinvest in our businesses, so we could support the festivals on the island, rather than we continue to be taking the same budget that we are getting here until a significant portion is going back, going back down the road. And so all the suppliers agreed with that. So State Solution is one of the largest suppliers of heavy duty, big stages on the island. So you, you may see different kind of stages, but all stages are not the same. So a lot of people have now gone Chinese in terms of the Chinese trussing and those things. But those are light duty trussing. When it comes to an international, they require heavy duty trussing. And that's a very, and, 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 and certificate of, um, of, um, of safety and 
load-bearing engineering reports, because these are international, international um, 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 performers. So you have to go with those benchmarks. So we provide, we have invested over 15 years in building our capacity to be able to support the festivals on the island. We don't have these things happening very often, so you wouldn't see all big stage coming out very often, small activities. But when, when we bring forward this to the table, it's to really help lift what we do on the island. And the problem is that with the companies that exist, with the company that exists, all of the services required for jazz could very well come from right here on the island with just some, some additional support from Trinidad. But this is how we grew an industry. And that is what State Solution is vested in um, and would have tried to guard to ensure that there was integrity, would have been intact all around. Unfortunately, I think that where this was a sore point to me is that accountability, there wasn't accountability where there needed to be accountability. Because if is it that my, my, the people that I report to, the colleagues that I sit around the table with, they all know that Elvis Mugabe Rajman would have taken this approach, would have taken necessary steps, would have been stayed away from certain, certain information because unless I receive it, I can't get it. And yet still, they still want to leave it out in the public like Elvis is finding his way. I did not appoint myself on the committee. I was asked to be and I gladly, and I gladly serve because one of the interesting things is that there's a, there's, a, there's a strong relationship between myself and the division. I like the leadership of the division, and I continually supported the division's mandate while they also supported TPAC's mandate. So it's a beautiful relationship. But in regards to this, I can't see where I am at the company of which I have an interest in is asked to be punished because John Arnold sent or leaked sensitive information. And I don't know if that was done out of negligence or if that was done out of malice. It's not for me to determine, but that will be answered in another place. Do but I wanted to make this very, very clear so that people, and I'm not here to really, this is not clearing of name. People are going to say what they're going to say, and they're going to think what they're going to think. What, what I put on the table, what are the facts of the situation? So bearing in mind what you have outlined, Elvis, identifying to the relevant individuals mm -hmm. what the circumstances were uh, on repeated occasions, yeah. um, your, your eventual decision to separate yourself from the, the committee, why then versus earlier, versus um, in terms of trying to separate yourself no. earlier? Right, good. So, so just clarify that so part. Because prior to the email being, being sent to me in, um, in error or, 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 I don't know, prior to that, there was absolutely no issue because remember- a week at that time. At that time, because a week before that, I was still on the committee. I was still doing all that I was doing. And we implemented and did the launch of Jazz. So, and, and the company received a, a request then. The company just didn't, didn't send in any, request, any, any tender because of the sensitivity of it. So at that time, there was so no what, issue. So let me just get this clear. While you were on the committee at that time, yes. um, and there was the launch of the Jazz yes. Festival, the company was sent a, a yes. similar kind of request yes. um, in order to submit, um, to submit a bid for yes. consideration? Yes, correct. Okay, at that time, while at the same period while you sat on the yes, committee? correct, correct. Okay. Correct. It was one week after. Mm -hmm. So the question I'm asking, what is the THA's policy in terms of how they determine um, um, procurement? Because the company or companies can't be receiving tender requests weeks before, months before, for different things they're doing. And on this particular issue, you have chosen to say, this company will not get this going forward. What, on what grounds did the company do so? Because if the, if the argument is not conflict of interest, because the argument can't be conflict of interest when I've declared my conflict and also declared the interest, and I've done so and proven I have the facts to prove that. So the, uh, the question is on what grounds did the Festival Commission determine that they will send something to you this time, but choose? That's a very, that's a very dangerous rule because then we have a pick and choose, and then who then chooses on what merit? And is, there, is, there, is, is, this, is this fair across the board? And those are the questions I wish to bring to the table. So this is not, and I mean, it's very clear, Julian. This is not an attack on the THA. This is an attack on systems and procedure. But and this is how we change and advance systems and procedures. So I am hoping that, because I am not going through all of this, because there are several potential fallouts from this.
Before before we get to the fallouts, <laughs> because obviously that's part of the conversation Correct. that we that we would have to have. Do you believe, Elvis, that uh, you know you have certain strategic positions instrumental in your contributions in Tobago, both private and and, yeah. and public sector? Um, do you believe that this is this is targeted in some way, form or fashion at Elvis Rasman, or it may have been a genuine error in terms of communicating the the the, the, the information and so on? In, in within this entire scene. I this I will not respond to that at this point in time. Mm -hmm. um, I will not respond to that because I would want to allow this to be ventilated in another place. Okay. So I would want, want to respond to that at this point in time. If this is a mistake, it's a it's negligence. And that negligence has caused someone opportunity. And if it was malice, if it was malicious, that's another thing by itself. So I don't know. It's not for me to determine that. There's a place to determine that. But w whatever the case may be, the company can't be asked or to be punished. Any other company, as a matter of fact, that you had them a part of the conversation because you invited them as part of the stakeholder to discuss what's going on for jazz. You invited the company to become part of the, of the list of tenders um, service provider for the launch of it, which was one week before. And then one week after, you saw it fit that nothing comes in the direction because of a mistake that you made. John Allen needs to be held accountable. And I put that on record. Because be a big man and accept what needs to happen. Be a big man and say, listen, this what took place. But you know what? These are the safety measures we're putting in place. Because Elvis is not a part of any of those things. And they all know this. I think it was disingenuous that the people I sit around the table with, and I, I level with them, and we talk, and we, we work towards bettering what happens within the division, the companies, the island that they would have actually taken a position and just left me in the cold, because that is exactly what they did. And the thing is, what, what, we, what we do as to be going as many times over, we simply just cower under it and say, it's OK. It's not. Because my integrity is important to me. And this is not to convince anybody of any way. The facts are the facts. And I have everything to prove it. So the committee would have taken a decision, or might this have been part of the procurement process in terms of No, I think which... I, I don't believe this was a. I cannot say, I can't say where the decision was taken. And that is the reason why we wrote to the court, asking the court to compel the Festival Commission from making any further determination until that was asked. Because we asked on what grounds was the company not afforded. Because, Julian, even if the company sends in a, a, a tender, they could still give whoever they want the tender. It doesn't matter. I mean, somebody else may have done better than we did. And it may have gone to somebody else regardless. But, but when you totally eliminate that, you do two things. Then on what ground did you eliminate it? That's one. And two, and if we're talking about really building capacity for Tobago, if you have just taken out another major supplier on the island that provides the service, what we are doing is that the additional thing we need, you become a company boat. So what do, you, what do you then say would be the, the next step based on what has come out as the determination of the court to dismiss um, the, the request that would have been put the court at felt, this time? The court felt that there was not enough information that would warrant him to, to grant an injunction. And he, de and he denied the injunction. And I, and I, I think the justice was, was, was fair. I, the first time I've been in that experience before, and it was quite nice. And I think the justice was fair. Um, the, the attorneys argued their point. But what they, what, they, what they just did, it also gave us a very pinpoint sort of attention as to the things that we need to be focusing on. But I, that's a whole matter by itself. I am not here to discuss what that needs to be. I'm here to clear the air in terms of my role and function in regards to jazz. Um, I was asked to serve, and I served diligently. And I know the reason they asked me to serve, because I am what they call a go-to guy. When they want things done, I will go and I will pull my team and use all my resources to ensure that it's done well. And I've always done so. In my personal capacity, in my, in my public capacity, and I will continue to do so. Let us look, let us not be, let us not be, be, be hoodwinked and think that this is something more than it needs to be. This is, there's no war between Elvis and the division. There's none of that. There's war between Elvis and the system. In terms of, let's fix the system. Ask Festival Commission, about their procurement procedure. Ask Festival Commission if the individuals that they're hiring or sending tenders to, do they have the capacity to provide those things, opposed to someone who has had a proven track record over a decade. So on what grounds do you make a determination? Those are the questions that we need to ask. 
And that's how, therefore, people are trying to make this into more than it is. And Humpty Dumpty has had a great fall. But I am doing what I'm doing for the love of the island, and I will continue to do it so. Whether I do it within the THA or I do it outside of the THA, but I will continue to do what I do, and I do it in God's grace, but I do it within my integrity intact. So this is the first, this is the last time I will say anything on this matter. Anytime I tell you here anything on this matter, it will come from a different place. Bearing in mind one of the things you said earlier, this is a small island, mm -hmm. knowing the circumstances, mm -hmm. the way forward, how do you see this working out, this with the realities of the system based on where you sit from your professional capacity? Yeah. And the current matter, as you indicated, of trying to um, treat with the issue of the system. So, How do you see this impacting or influencing things going forward? So, so Julian, the, law, the, law, the law is it is clear. There is, in the act, it has, I think it's the SEMP that clearly indicates where conflict of interest issue is at this, is, 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 a, is a challenge. Mm -hmm. What are the steps to do to treat with that? So, when the secretary pulls together her team, right, we discuss many things. Many of the things I have no involvement in outside of sharing an idea because it's done by different agencies. So there are many things that we add value to, but where I see areas that they may be overlapping on my responsibility as a CEO of the company or, as, or a government representative and, the, and my responsibility in, in terms of my business affiliates, I will share and declare that interest one time because that is what the law dictates. If you see that thing, those things happening, you declare it. So therefore, it is, for, it is for the management to now determine what is the level of access Elvis will have or anybody else. Because this is not just for me, Julian. I am not doing this to serve a particular interest at this point in time. This is to fix the system so that this doesn't become something that anybody else has to face along the road. Would you say one of the realities is that um, you are not unique in the Tobago space yeah. um, to be working uh, within the uh, environment, but at the same time associated with a company providing um, services or rendering services? It's not, it's not unique at all. There are many other, Julian, we live in this space. At one point in time, there was a big push to create more entrepreneurs on the island. Where do you think these entrepreneurs came from? They came from right within the very same system. For individuals who may be working within the THA, but they have the little side business. That's why people bought their little chairs and tables and tents. But these are the very same companies because if you, when we start talking conflict of interest, we can't use a broad stroke for it because in the Tobago circle, it is so small, everybody knows each other. You don't have to be my brother to create a conflict of interest. You just have to be my friend. But how do you prove that? So it becomes an, is the systems and balance checks that you put in place to ensure that things go in a particular kind of way. And I think in all fairness, I would have taken all necessary steps to ensure that I check those systems, check the processes, and made the necessary, made the necessary presentation to all that was in needed to be in to go to. Whether or not they themselves felt that it was it was it was okay, and they didn't probably they need to do a more due diligence, it's not for me to determine. But I went to the law. Exactly what John Arnold actually sent me the area and highlighted it in my WhatsApp. Um, what the what 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 is is established to treat with conflict of interest, and I followed it to the team. So you are saying that um, notwithstanding what is out there, saying clearly because it's no secret, yeah. what's out there is that um, Elvis wants to sit on the committee. Um, and Elvis wants to benefit from um, services simultaneously. So he wants to design it, set it up, and then in the same breath, um, offer himself to be able to provide the services. But what you are saying here clearly is, from the day one in terms of sitting on the committee, mm -hmm. you would have complied in terms of the regulations to put it forward okay. clearly. This is my association uh, in the circumstances and left that decision up to um, the powers that be under these circumstances to mm -hmm. treat with it. That's what you're saying in terms of making it very clear um, as it is at this that point. Is what, that is that precise what I'm saying. And, then, and for just for those who, or people could be a little kind of hard to get information to. So let, let's take this time to just educate them. I cannot design this. I mean, the, 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 that would be a serious flaw in our systems. I cannot design Jazz Festival. Administrated through Festival Commission, who has to get funding from the division and then manipulate, you see the level of manipulation and manipulate procurement to give 
my interest, the, it doesn't work that way. That's why you have separation of power. For the same reason a secretary cannot mandate an officer to buy this or pay this or pay that, because there's a system. It has to go to the administrator. So there's a separation that's created, that's a control and balance within the system. So this is really a question as to whether the control and balance that Festival Commission has is robust enough. Because if anybody could do all of that, Julian, well, let me be Superman. I don't know if I have those kind of powers, and I don't believe I do. But I don't wish to exercise those powers, even if I did. Because I believe there's enough work here for everybody. Do you see yourself affect, being affected going forward? Of course I do. Um, I, I do. But um, we'll, play, we'll play those hands when those hands present themselves. I am steadfast in what I'm doing. I'm steadfast in, in terms of lending support to developing the island, as I do. And as I said, whether this happens, whether in my public capacity or my private capacity, I will continue to do so. So I, I, I will not say anything further where this comes in again, but I'll look to see how, how my people respond, my friends, how they, how they respond. How, do, how, do, how are you concerned that this, um, you know, you are stating and focusing on the system, yes. or we live in a small space. Yeah. Are you concerned that this will eventually become uh, a political matter? Given the, well, the, the nature of this, the very small space well, that we operate in? Um, or some, you are hopeful that it no, doesn't no, go into that direction? People, some people are trying to allude to this like some kind of political thing. This is no political thing. I don't believe that there was any political ploy anyway. I think, I think that the situation presented itself and it was poorly handled. That's what I think. I don't believe, I, 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 at this point in time, I don't believe this is a, any political ploy. It was just poorly handled. and individuals choose not to take accountability for the action. And I'm bringing that to the fore. Take accountability, be a man, and own up to your thing. And you, are calling, John him to do. And you are calling him out and by calling name. John out. John needs to slow. Be accountable and own up. Every one of them, John Arnold, Kern Cowan, Corey Sarcher, Charleston, and my honorable secretary, they all sat in the very same place and they said the same thing. All of festival commission heads, Procurement, finance, logistics, hospitality, all the key implementers heard me stand up in a meeting and said, I wish not to be in any conversation that's going to compromise the integrity of what needs to happen as we to budgeting, procurement, or any of those things, because I have a particular interest of a company that will actually, I made those things very clear. And, and they can't deny that. It's on record. All right, excellent. Uh, folks, you've heard it here. Elvis Rajman seeking to clear the air, really bringing some more details and perspective uh, to what would have hit um, the media, so to speak, uh, mm -hmm. within the last day or so yesterday, if uh, memory serves correctly, regarding the release that came out through the Office of the Chief Secretary uh, regarding circumstances surrounding jazz. Very interesting at that, and we've been now been placed in a position quite clearly as the Tobago Updates morning show to ensure that we get some answers uh, alternatively um, following this uh, very clear um, information being presented here. The perspective from Elvis Rajman, and he has indicated clearly uh, this is not the end of it, but we may hear of the follow-up in terms of efforts to try to look at the system broad in other areas. So, so Julian, what was interesting about all of this, I remember the justice indicating, is there a resolution? And what was interesting, when we filed that injunction, we didn't file the injunction and ask for damages or none of those things. We filed the injunction to say, listen, stop. Take a look at what's going on here. What is the reason? If there was a reason, they never stated. And if there's no reason, then why deny? That is the purpose of that. So this wasn't an attack. It was a, this was a, a highlight. And people sit in this place and feel like they shouldn't highlight things. I'm not one of those persons. I'm sorry. I cannot be that person. Final few moments, wrapping <laughs> sure. up your closing comments. Um, this became messy. It's unfortunate it became as messy as it did. But I stand on the ground of principle. I stand on the ground of integrity. And for those who feel that I don't have it, that is fine. But for those that matters, they know better. And all the members who sat around the table they also know better, and they know that, that I, what, what, they, what is purported out in the public, that they have not said anything public on, and they have, and it, but it speaks to their integrity as well. But more important for me, my integrity is intact, and I will continue doing the good work that Elvis Rajman 
has been known for. All right, thank you very much there. <laughs> Folks, that's Elvis Rajman joining us here on the Tobago Updates Morning Show and taking the, the, the determination. Yes, this is an exclusive coming to you first here uh, in response to the circumstances governing the overall matter. Viewers, we want to thank you so much for the continued love and support. Just under about 400 in a matter of seconds or minutes uh, joining to follow. All right, we want to thank you so much for the continued love and support for the Tobago Updates Morning Show and to remind you that this is your opportunity to share the live, share the live, share the live.